Look at this. Look at this. Look at these. These are, uh, look at those little baby, little baby oysters. This is an oyster farm. But uh, I'm not going to talk anymore like that because I just checked the forecast and that, that is a thundercloud and lightning, lightning is forecast to start hitting this beach sometime in the next hour. And uh, it's a little bit exposed to say the least. So I'm going to try and get back before I get fried. But uh, in today's ranty run, I will be ranting about how I've completely destroyed mountain running for myself and how my productivity has gone out the window. Let's complain. Well, these shoes are very much soaked with seawater. And that will be the least of my concerns if these thunder clouds turn up and I get struck by lightning. I do, however, uh, know the techniques. You start to feel the hair on your arms to tingle, squat down with your butt as low to the ground as possible and grab around your knees. Not sure if it actually helps in lightning, but it'll definitely make you a more amusing sight to find if you do get struck by lightning. Don't get struck by lightning, it's very dangerous. Um, I would not have come out here if I'd realized that forecast was uh, quite so impending. I am literally out running a thundercloud, uh, which is perhaps a good, a good uh, motivation because I am confused and angry. Um, I went for a mountain run uh, two days ago for the first time in about a month, more than a month, 68 weeks, maybe two months. And it made me realize that I've really made a massive, massive mistake. Uh, oh, by the way, in case you're new to my ranty runs, Randy Runs was her run, I will run. He won't continue, so I'm broken tech, complaining about something. But uh, this week I've been down in sunny. It has been sunny, it's been absolutely glorious here. It's the first day we've had rain in about three weeks. <laughs> it's been nuts. Um, sunny Cranfield, which I uh, don't know where it is. It's on the sort of south east of Northern Ireland. In fact, that point over there is as far Southeast as you can get in Northern Ireland and not be in the Republic of Ireland, which is just over there in the north side of Carnford Lock. Oh, a big rock. Let's kick this big rock. It turns out it was just a piece of foam. Stop poisoning our oceans with your microplastics. Just a little uh, eco distraction there. What was I talking about? Oh, yes. Mountain running and how my mountain running is. Not going well, not going well. Uh, basically, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I just was getting incredibly busy with my client work. I did the equivalent of probably five months work in two months. It was just ridiculous and that. It's just had a knock on effect over kind of everything I've been doing. Um, and I don't know, I just felt really distracted and unfocused. Um, and then the opportunity came up to do uh, a little bit of promotional work for Adam Coast Half Martin. Really good half Martin, highly recommend it. I don't know if that works actually going ahead, but anyway, um, I may or may not do it, but we'll see. Um, but I suddenly had this idea. I've been doing mountain running for the last two, three years. The pandemic kind of killed it for a year, or well, killed me running races for a year. Anyway, that was gutting. It was weird. It was like. The channel was mostly fueled, or in many ways it was fueled by at least one race video a month, if not two, and then zero for well over a year. Kind of lost the focus on that a bit, but anyway. Where am I going with this? Yeah, I suddenly, I think I was out one day, and I was struggling up the hill, and I was coming back, and I just went for it, I just ran as fast as I could, and I felt great because I hadn't run really fast a long time, and it made me nostalgic for how fast I used to shut up and it made me nostalgic. Are you warning me that lightning is coming? I really hope that's not. Lightning is coming, run away. Anyway, it made me really, really nostalgic for uh, for road running again, be able to run fast, because I was pretty fast, not nowhere near elite fast, but I could run a half marathon in an hour and 35 minutes, which is not bad. It would put you in like the top, I don't know, like 15% maybe at most races. And I got a lot slower once I switched to doing trails and, and mountains. I just kind of 
I wanted that speed again, so I had this notion, you know what, I'm gonna train, run and vlog a 90 minute half marathon. Just to give you an idea of how stupid a goal that was, my current road pace is about 8.30 for a half marathon distance, 8.30 minutes per mile. I would have to run 6.45. <laughs> I think it'd be about 6, 6.50, shut up, about 6.50, 6.45 in order to do a sub 90 minute half marathon. So, crazy goal, but I focused on it anyway. And uh, Dermot Mathers, huge thank you to him, put together a coaching plan for me. No problems with the coaching plan, it's been great, Dermot's been great. But uh, I think the problem, it's not you Dermot, it's me. Uh, after six weeks of doing that training, I realised that I really do not care in the slightest about getting PBs on roads. Because um, I was training for a flat race, so I, and the paces I was doing meant I couldn't run hills, I couldn't even run roads that were hilly. I just tried to find places really flat where I could run, where I could train, where I could do my speed work. And did it for six weeks, roughly. I hated it. Liked it at the start, absolutely hating it towards the end. It just kind of took over because I was doing roads and I just couldn't ever get myself properly into the space of doing a proper trail run. I did try, I did go out and do a few trail runs, but uh, really, really struggled with them because I was totally off, off the hills. And now I find myself uh, halfway through the summer, um, having now kind of given up on that half marathon plan, but also my mountain fitness is gone as well with a few mountain races on the horizon. So I've completely ruined mountain races for myself this year because my fitness is just, it's just not there. I'll see what I can pick up over August because there's gonna be a few things in September, but look at this gross seaweed. Did you know that you can eat every single type of seaweed in the UK? It's all edible. Whether or not you actually want to eat it is another thing, but yeah, it's all edible. Yeah, so I realized I don't care about PBs on the road anymore. I used to. That was really what pushed me. I would go out there and I would uh, put myself in absolute agony to get a PB. But I think what I've realized is I don't care about PBs. What I get more for running is when my running kind of shows off the country or shows off a landscape and that in turn inspires or gets reactions from others who then want to go out and do or just who or just a landscape they've never seen more before i get far more from that than i think i ever have from um from getting a pb because i just lack whatever that drive is that proper competitive runners have i used to have it a little bit it's gone now it's gone now um, and that's okay, I think there's different types of runners. I think my running videos have always been aimed at people who are more the casual kind of runner, uh, who run because, I don't know, you just want to increase your fitness or you run to explore, because it's a way of seeing more places and more things faster than hiking. Um, and that's why I want to focus my running back on again. So yeah, back to the trails, back to the mountains, I'll maintain. I can easily maintain a two hour half marathon by running trails, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. What else was I going to rant about? Oh yes, my productivity. My productivity has gone out the window, I think, because I've got at the minute no sense of routine whatsoever. Um, I just end up this very, very busy, kind of, I don't know, busy funk. Sorry, I burped there. I've just projected, I had t 10 projects all at once. And while not all of them were requiring work done at the same time, that's 10 things to hold in my head, to churn through, to, to try and think and plan through. And um, I'm not very good at that. So it's kind of distracted me. I feel like I haven't quite been my usual cheerful self. I think just basically I've been working too hard. I'm not, uh, I'm not motivated enough by money uh, <laughs> to, to push through it. I'm more, I'm more motivated to work at just enough and then have a bit of a balance to be able to go out and, you know, do things like this or, I don't know, encourage other people to get outside and find their own kind of balance, which is ironic. I'm always telling people they need to find a work-life balance. And I think for the past two, three years, I've been working, I don't know, 12 hours a day. <laughs> it's mad. Still spend seven hours a week answering comments and messages. But the last week, the last week I have not answered Maybe one or two, hardly any 
of YouTube comments on any videos. So if you comment on a video and haven't replied, nothing against you. I just don't want to talk to you right now. Um, what is that? Ooh, it's a... That is the massacred shell of a sea urchin that's been chewed to pieces by some, by some gull. It's cool when you come down here at low tide and you find all kinds of things. I found a starfish the other day. Uh, yes, so, uh, what am I talking about? Yes, so, trying to get my focus back. How long have I got left in this? I'm all right. I'm trying to get my focus back, so, um, I think one of the things I waste a lot of time doing is I get into like, I'll sit down, just do something, and then I'll check my phone quickly, and half an hour later I've got myself in a complete loop of distraction, uh, and nothing gets, and nothing gets done. So I'm gonna put together a little bit of a plan, a schedule for how I'm gonna use social media. I haven't worked it out yet, but it'll probably be, um, and I don't like doing it because for me it's always, Social media has always sort of been more organic. You know, I just react and, you know, put stuff up. I think it's just gonna have to, have to change for the sake of everything else. Cause I think there's a real issue at the minute with, especially things like short form addictive content where you can just churn through. The more information you have going into your head, the less you're able to like process everything else. So, when you sit down to take a break from your work and you decide, oh, I'm just gonna go and check YouTube for five minutes, I'm just gonna check TikTok for five minutes. I think short form videos, especially TikTok, like you can, five minutes you can go through, like, I don't know, like 50 videos, maybe? And suddenly you've got 50, 50 sort of new stimuluses in your brain, which when you then go back to work, it really doesn't help with it at all. That's why I kind of have a problem with producing long form content. I'm kind of worried that it's maybe just contributing to problems in society. Or maybe the problem is down to us and the kind of things we actually consume. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens there. I may experiment more with YouTube shorts. I like, am on TikTok, uh, but I don't post very often. We'll see where it goes. Maybe I'm just being a grumpy old man. <laughs> People probably said the same thing about TV shows and TV, destroying the cinema. Oh, that is true. That is true. I mean, there are people who will come home every night and what they do every single night is sit down and watch three, four hours of TV. And that's it. And then complain about not having time to do stuff. It's... There's certain types of what we think is unwinding time and relaxation time, which isn't physically, it might relax you, but Mentally, it fills up your head, and for some people, not everybody, some people, especially myself, a lot of mental stimulus leads to complete inaction. So, what am I going to do about it? Well, I'm going to implement the what I'm calling the 9-9 policy. Um, the 9-9 policy is quite simple. Between the hours of 9 p.m. at night and 9 a.m. in the morning, possibly even 10 a.m. We'll see. We'll call it 9-9 for now because it sounds better. Um, I'm going to uninstall all social media apps off my phone and try possibly even keep it in airplane mode. We'll see. I've tried things like this in the past. What usually happens is I'll, I'll need like an urgent update from a client and they'll be late getting it to me and then I'll leave my phone on to get it. But you know what? You know what? My head, my mental health, whatever you want to call it, is more important than a client having their uh, question answered so so yeah I do think actually maybe the pandemic and people working at home has sort of led to a lot more I don't know expectation of working weird hours I don't think it's good for me I definitely have to have a few clients will phone me after work hours or email me like really late at night and I get that some people are working flexi time um, and that's fine but just don't be respecting, respecting, don't be expecting responses from me after certain times. Yeah, so no phone before 9 a.m. or after 9 p.m. Well, no social media anyway. I kind of need to be able to be contacted. And we'll see how that goes. Right, haven't been struck by lightning. The thunderclouds have not come. In fact, the sky is clearing. Um, we've got a 
tour booked into chocolate factory near Enogs. I've, I've done some work for them, sort of on like a as a client for projects. I mean, I've seen them kind of set up their business and get going, but I've never actually been as a as a tourist. And Louise loves chocolate, so we're going to go there at 11 this morning for a tour. I'm going to might put on skies and see if they actually recognise me. I filmed there like three, four times, <laughs> so. We'll see what happens, but yeah, near Enox, if you're down this way, that's a good, uh, a good little, uh, a good little one to do. Anyway, thank you if you watched all of this ranty run. I have no idea if you can find any of this useful, or if any of what I've said, I will agree with myself in a couple of days. Take everything I say with a strong opinion, with a pinch of salt. Um, you know what they say about opinions. Uh, <laughs> I think opinions. Opinions can change. I don't believe the internet is is the place for proper discussion or or sort of changing people. Ooh! I just saw some worm poo come out of the ground there. Yeah, I don't think, speaking of worm poo, comment section of YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I don't think YouTube is really the right platform for any kind of in-depth discussion. Um, I think all the best discussions happen in private one-to-one -one, where two people can share their opinions their beliefs and things in a neutral environment where there isn't like the the spectator showmanship that you get on the internet that forces people to not want to lose lose face um, I've seen some very angry people sort of publicly display in your opinion and then you like talk to them privately and they're completely different people it's just nobody wants to look wrong in public uh, so when like someone's called out or accused of something or called an idiot, there's just why am I talking about this? I'm supposed to be finishing this video. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you watched all this way, kudos to you. I would assume if you watched actually let me know. <laughs> Comment and let me know if this is your first time on this channel and you actually watched this length. Uh, and comment and let me know if you're a subscriber and you watch this like interested to know because the weird thing is I've done these ranty rant videos assuming nobody would watch them or that they would watch like a minute and get bored because I would get bored I wouldn't watch me talking for half for 17 minutes on some obscure topic about my poor running woes or boohoo poor Steven uh, but they have the same retention ratio as all my shorter videos so the more I draw them out the better that is for my channel so thanks if you've watched this length uh, have a little look around the channel my focus is sort of all over the show, but mostly my focus is on the outdoors, running and technology. And uh, there's an iconic looking girl. Oh, sun's out. Should I go into the sea? No, if the tide was in, I would have went into the sea now for a bit of a dip, but when it's this low, you're basically running straight into a seaweed forest that's full of crabs and weird creatures. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm away to look at some chocolate.